All right, it's time to kick it off. Let's go, Lameen. Cool. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining. Welcome to episode two of uh, Ericsson Simplified. So I guess maybe you caught a glimpse in that video, but uh, it's basically this sort of interview conversational style podcast we're trying out to talk to people around the company and then share with you all a little bit more about you know what we do and, and really who we are. Uh, I'm your host, Lamine Dion. I'm also a co-chair of the Gen X ERG, which is an employee resource group here at Ericsson uh, geared towards early career professionals. So really looking at a way to create community and volunteering opportunities, networking, upskilling, and all that good stuff. Uh, before I go and introduce our awesome guest, I wanted to briefly touch on, uh, for those external, uh, what Ericsson is as a company, what we do. I know if you asked me in college, probably what Ericsson did, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. And I think I wasn't too unique in that. So maybe the Spark Notes version here uh, is Ericsson is really concerned with enabling connectivity. Right, and it can mean a lot of different things as the landscape sort of changes. But traditionally, it's uh, partnering with service providers. So you think your AT&Ts, your T-Mobiles, to help them build out, maintain, and upgrade their networks. But of course, as the landscape changes, you might hear different cutting edge things that Ericsson is working on. So you might hear private networks or wireless solution or cloud solution, and that's all sort of part of the package as well. Um, that said, without further ado, I'll just jump in and uh, introduce our guest, Stephanie Lippitt. Uh, she joins us as the Director of Network Strategy Execution here at Ericsson. Uh, Steph, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and to everyone for tuning in who wants to hear my story. I'm really excited to share it with you. Awesome. Yeah, me too. Um, so I kind of got ahead of it a bit, but please introduce yourself to the group, what your role is, maybe a little context around what that means. Yes, uh, Steph, as Lamine said, I am the director of our Networks Organization Strategy Execution. What does that mean? Um, so Networks Organization within our North American team is over a thousand people. Um, brilliant, brilliant team from anyone working on bringing world's first engineering advancements um, online to people who are building radios to uh, the people who are hanging those radios on towers or getting them out in the field to really keep America connected. Um, and what I do for that team is help to develop and align a clear strategy that is aligned with our overall group's uh, goals and achievements and help sort of articulate that throughout the organization to ensure that everyone knows what what they're doing every day is making an impact and helping us achieve our goals and help communicating that upwards as well to highlight the important work that they're doing and making sure we're on track to get those achievements. It sounds awesome. So, I mean, very cool job. I'm sure everyone is curious how you got there and maybe if you could share a bit of your journey, uh, both inside and outside of Ericsson, and then also, I guess, educational even before that, that'd be very cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I would say, let me say kind of the highlight reel, right? If I if I just went into that would be, um, I was a CEO of a tech startup company, an international tech startup company out of Wales by the time I was 25. Um, I then moved to a um, director of strategy at a wireless infrastructure investment company that bought various uh, tech companies for services to that to my dream job at Ericsson as chief of staff, and finally where I am here today. Um, but what I wanted to do, you know, like I said, that's the highlight reel. Um, you can read that in my bio. And I wanted to do something a little different today, which is talk about some of the roles I've had that maybe aren't so glamorous, but that I feel like really made me who I am and got me to where I am today. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to go on a little storytelling um, about some of those roles and why they were important to me and how they helped me get my roles that I have now. Um, so if I take it back to college, just starting out, um, I graduated from high school at 17. I had no way to afford college. Um, so I had to take a year off try to save up enough money to go to community college at that point, um, working three jobs throughout my entire college career. Uh, some of those jobs I'll talk about, one was bartending. Um, my lesson there is that I can still make a pretty mean cocktail, so great. The nice. other one I'll talk about is um, I actually sold mattresses. So I would sit in a store from nine to nine and pray that more than three people would come in. 
And why I bring that up is it really taught me how to focus on people um, and influence and strive to fulfill their needs, right? And to look at everything as an opportunity. I literally would maybe only get three people in the store that day, straight commission job. If they walked oh. out, that was an opportunity walking out. And it also taught me about the importance of communication and addressing needs that I still use today. It wasn't enough to say buy a mattress. I had to convince them why they needed it and why what I was providing would help them solve that. Um, so moving on from there, a couple years later, I graduated um, from University of Maryland Global with a dual bachelor's in business administration and marketing. Um, I got my first big girl job. Actually, a, a friend worked at Ronstad Networking's never uh, too early to network, and she hooked me up, said, hey, there's this tech startup, the one I re referenced in my highlight reel. I didn't start as CEO. I started as a sales admin. And what that was was actually doing cold calling. And let me tell you, cold calling builds some character. We had a big TV on the sales floor. You had to make over 100 calls a day. And you had to strive to get the best con amount of uh, connection time. And why that still sticks with me is it really ingrained the importance of attitude. Um, it didn't matter if I got hung up on, which I did a lot, um, or if I just made the biggest sale in the company. Every time I picked up the phone again, it was up to me how that was going to shake out, what attitude I went into the next call with. So I always kind of tell myself, like, pick up the phone again. Doesn't matter if you just had a terrible meeting. Doesn't matter if you bombed a test, pick the phone up again. And it's a new day. It's a new opportunity. So I feel like that really taught me that. Um, spend a little more time there because I think that that company really, really gave me a lot in my career. I moved into a product sales manager, my first job managing people. And what that taught me was I was an awful manager. <laughs> Terrible. Wow. At that point in time, um, I thought that being a manager, because I just didn't have a lot of examples, um, was about ruthlessness. Um, about what you could extract from your sales team, what could, you could get from them. And that's sometimes I really wish that I could call these people up and be like, I'm so sorry you had to work for me. Because <laughs> I think now, hopefully, my team would be shocked by that statement because I approach it entirely differently now that I've had more experience and exposure to great managers, um, that it's not about what you can extract. It's about what you can give to them to help them unleash their full potential. And then finally there in my role as CEO, um, the very first lesson is um, our founder of that company, Alan Ockenden, um, was the first person to believe in me and encourage me to be curious. Uh, he was an engineer himself for a company called Nortel. And one day he had a dream and said, I'm going to start this company and put a mortgage on his house and did it. And oh. Then from there, he said, you know, always be curious. Nothing is your job or not your job. Go to the warehouse, learn what the people are doing in shipping and refurbishment and slotting cards into chassis. How are they getting things through international customs? Learn all of these pieces of the business. And that always taught me nothing is not your job. And it really benefits you to understand how a team works together. A salesperson doesn't make a company. A finance person doesn't make a company. It's the whole team effort and everything you do impacts others and everything they do helps impact you. Um, so that was a really, really um, huge learning part of my life that kind of brought me to where I am. And the reason I tell you guys all this is because I think a lot of times when we share our career journeys, we tend to focus on that highlight reel. And that can give misguide people to think that there is a clear career path. And not to say there's something wrong with making your own path, right? But then sometimes that leads us to when you veer off that path, feeling like a failure, feeling like you're doing something wrong. Um, and if you asked our talent acquisition team, I bet they would say um, being a mattress salesperson wasn't a requirement to being our director of strategy. Um, and it took me years and years to reflect upon this and appreciate what I learned. But if you find yourself, maybe you're not on the path you thought you were on, you're getting something out of that if you let yourself. Um, so I just wanted to share that because I feel like um, it's important to remember it's not always a straight path. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Very true. 
as well. It gives a lot of color, I think, to the to the journey and how you got here. And I heard a lot of good nuggets of wisdom here. If you could draw maybe a red thread through it and say what the lesson was and maybe how that translates to your success and your role today, what do you think that would be? I'd say being curious, um, just understanding the way things work, whatever role you're in at your company, having a coffee with the colleague to understand what they do, um, asking people, hey, I'm interested in your career. That curiosity helps you be more effective when you make business decisions. Because when you make decisions inside a silo, it, you're really only thinking about yourself and you're not thinking about the entire value chain that that brings and the other people working. So curiosity, I think, is the most important thing. Awesome. Cool. I'm going to pivot just a little bit yeah. on the topic of success in your role. Uh, data analytics. So we know it plays a crucial role in decision making for everybody, probably yourself included. How do you leverage data to inform uh, strategic moves and strategic decisions and be successful in your role? Yeah, I mean, it ties really closely to my role in strategy. I depend on reliable data to drive the decisions rather than hypothesis to drive the decisions. I mean, analyzing key performance indicators, um, it will help you identify trends, inform strategic decisions. Um, it's really creating that monitoring that help can help you predict future problems rather than just reacting to problems. And it's a really interesting topic right now, right? As everyone's so into AI, AI, it's the buzzword. Um, right. But it really starts with data. That's what's feeding artificial intelligence, right? And getting our data in order, ensuring that we make fact-based decisions is a big saying at Ericsson, as you know, Lamine. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be a delicate balance between fact-based and being innovative. Um, but if you use those to create your baseline, I think it, it really helps you um, by organizing and leveraging that data to make you more effective. Yeah, it's very true. Data is yep, the heart of everything. And if we look towards incoming professionals, you know, what sort of skills, I assume maybe it's within that innovative versus fact-based decision thing we're talking about, what sort of skills are you looking for in these incoming professionals? So, of course, with any job, there's going to be basic requirements, right? So I'm going to assume those are met. Um, what I believe I really look for is, number one, communication. Um, mm. Can you effectively articulate your ideas, right? You could be the best engineer, the best scientist in the world, have a great idea. If you don't know how to articulate that idea into a business impact, it's a huge miss. It might never come to fruition. Um, so I think communication is key. I also would say it's really about grit. Mm. Are you willing to go above and beyond? Do you want to learn these other areas? Um, I think there's an author by the name of Simon Sinek, also a famous businessman, and he had a quote that he said, you don't hire for skills, you hire for attitude. Um, and you can train the skills later. And I really believe that, not to say all skills are just completely fungible, but if you don't have the right attitude, there's nothing you can do uh, to train that. Mm, very true. No, that's great advice. Now, another slight pivot here. You're also the co-chair of WE, right? The Women of Ericsson ERG at Ericsson. Uh, what would you share, first of all, about WE, maybe sharing what it's about a little bit, but then any lessons that you might have learned on strategic impact through employee resource groups or through groups like that? Uh, so Women of Ericsson, amazing group, all of our ERGs at Ericsson, I would say the first and foremost is creating a community, you know, right. where you have a safe place to share feedback, seek feedback, and um, learn from one another. Our mission at WE, uh, beyond creating that community, also involves initiatives such as um, supporting talent attraction and retention. Um, career progression, helping people upskill where they might be missing some of those pieces and getting them ready for their next role, as well as helping um, leadership form what some of their initiatives may be to make sure that we have an inclusive and representative workforce. Mm, absolutely. And on that vein, you're really committed to promoting diversity, you know, in the tech industry at large. I'm sure you've done it both in this role, but also in previous roles. Could you maybe share a little bit more about what that means to you, how you think it impacts innovation, uh, and maybe growth in the tech sector moving forward. Yeah, it's something I'm really passionate about beyond my um, work with our Women of Ericsson group. I am also on the core team of our ERG for uh, DFW, ATW, Alliance of Technology and Women. I also work with Tech Titans, which is an organization um, who works closely to outreach um, 
programs to different high schools and things local to this area to try and get more diversity into the STEM pipeline. Um, and I would say diversity is not just about numbers, right? How many women are here? How many people of color? How many whatever? Um, and it's not just about what we see. People's diverse diversity is their diversity of experiences, right? That means they've experienced the world differently. And how does that fuel innovation? Um, you know, diversity of experiences creates diversity of solutions. And it helps us to challenge each other and think from different points of view. I mean, think about a conver an interesting conversation you've had with friends lately. It's not you in a room talking to yourself like someone exactly like you. It's people who are different, who have had different experiences and can share different solutions that they've arrived at. And that's the same with the technology company. You need diversity to have innovation. Otherwise, you might as well be working alone. Right, no, that's well put. Diversity of perspectives and thoughts right, and how that drives the solution. Super good point. Now I have a bonus question before we go into sort of the closing remark and then the Q&A. Uh, and you mentioned AI earlier. I was curious, you know, after watching this new sort of chat GPT and all of that, how do you think AI is going to change the landscape, maybe in your role personally or on your team or, or the company in the sector at large? Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of let me think about how I want to unpack that. So I would say, I mean, it's changing everything, right? If you think about how did email change business, how did mm -hmm. cell phones change business? Right. Um, I don't think it's a magic bullet. I think it's a tool to enhance what we already do. But I think in terms of upskilling and how people need to prepare for AI is going to um, surround touch on many different things i mean look at visualization right data is uh -huh. nothing if it's not visualized so we have a data and visualization team here and how do they create something from that data to give people like myself insights um, i'll give you an example is um, we have a sustainability goal in ericsson um, the ICT sector and the running of uh, networks alone accounts for a large portion of our carbon emissions. Now, how do we use data in that? Uh, well, we have a goal to reduce that. Reduce it from what? So we have a team of brilliant, brilliant engineers, visualizations who helped use the data to create a baseline so that we could really measure what are we doing it from. Um, and in terms of the AI coming into that is using artificial intelligence to do predictive models, uh, maybe when energy costs are the highest, switching on different features to help mm -hmm. reduce that. It also helps show us where we're headed. Data is going through the roof in terms of consumption from cellular users. It will help us predict how we can break the energy curve, if you will. So there's a ton of different ways. I think AI is here. It's here to stay. And it's a tool that we can use to free up our time to be even more effective in the things that really take human thought and critical thinking. Mm. Well put. Definitely a game changer coming up. Yep. So moving on to closing remarks here, as we close, do you have any advice for interns and new college grads, uh, broadly speaking? And then we'll go into the Q&A after, and I'm sure we can elaborate on that there. Yeah, uh, I'd say a bit of a cliche, but that's because it's true. Don't be afraid to fail. You know, uh, you can swing for the fence and get a home run or you can strike out, but you can get a home run. Um, so don't be scared to take on a project, to put your hand up. A lot of the roles I've had are because I got involved in something that wasn't my job and I wanted it to be my job. Um, so don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I don't believe that there is such a thing as staying in your lane. You don't have a lane. It's unpaved. Go where you want to go as long as you're making an impact. Um, and then I would say explore what is your intrinsic motivation, right? Um, there's intrinsic motivation, which is doing something because it gives you enjoyment versus extrinsic, such as I need to get paid and paid my bills and I need to do this. Explore what is your intrinsic motivation. What do you want to go to work every day and do? You spend more time at work in your life than you do with your family. It better be something you're passionate about that you enjoy doing. And then map out, of course, how can you make money doing that? But first you have to love what you do. That's great advice. So with that, I'll leave space. We wanted to leave a cushion here for Q&A. Uh, so please go ahead, drop your questions in the chat. I don't know if Dennis, you have a 
sort of method you want to monitor it, but we're super open here for you guys to ask some questions and uh, step to answer. Yep, thanks, Lamine. Um, there's no questions right now, but I believe Natalie had a question specifically for Stephanie. I did, and I was actually typing it, but I will happily hop on here. Um, I'd like to understand from your perspective, Stephanie, why um, is Erickson an awesome place to work? And, you know, I'd like to hear the answer you would tell your best friend, um, you know, if she were considering, you know, coming to, to work at Erickson. Um, so why, you know, why Erickson? <laughs> well, that's easy because half my best friends are here now. Um, ah, I'm not joking. The, <laughs> the people here are amazing. You know, when I first started, um, we have something because we're a Swedish company. So we have something called Fika, which is just a coffee chat with a colleague. It doesn't have to have a purpose or a meeting. And I loved it because you would go to people and just say Fika. And that knew like, hey, Lamine, I just want to know what you're about, what you do. And I would set those up when I first started across the organization just to learn about people. And I noticed a common thing that every single person I met with asked me at the end. And they said, how can I help you? And to me, I'm like, whoa. And like, they wanted to help me. How can I introduce you to someone? How can I do this? And I just find the people I work with are like so open to speaking with me, helping me grow, providing me feedback. And I have never experienced that in another organization. You know, normally mentorships are quite special. You find them, you might network with a couple of people, but the people here, there's just a culture that really, really is something special. that thank you and i learned the term fika from you so i appreciate that too thank you <laughs> well i mean there's a, a question that came to me about uh, networking and so i think there's just this I, idea about getting stephanie's opinion about the importance of networking as a student or early career professional and maybe some tips about how you went about um, building your professional network. Yeah, networking is the single most important thing you can do. Um, people look at it as like, if you have the time. No, it is so critical and it's never too early uh, to start building that network. Um, I would say, I kind of mentioned it, look, my colleague at Randstad got me a job that I eventually got me into the tech industry in the first place. That was networking. Um, every job I've had since then has been through a colleague I've known. Um, every opportunity I've had has been through mentors or sponsors. Um, even my job at Ericsson, I'll tell you, I actually interviewed for a job at Ericsson a year before I ever started working here, and I was grossly underqualified. Um, but I stayed in touch with that recruiter and, you know, we just hit it off and I made sure to stay in touch in a role that came up that was perfect for me. Um, so make sure you network. And I would say, yeah, of course, it can give you um, opportunities yourself, but make sure that you make time to help other people grow too. Um, help that pipeline that's coming in to network and place them in the right place, especially in a company that's this big, right? We have, I think, 100,000 employees. I couldn't do that if I didn't have my network of who to talk to, what to do. It, it is so important and you'll leave jobs and keep those connections that you've made and it will just help you grow as a person. Awesome. Oh, I saw someone in the chat asked about fikas. What do fikas mean? I think uh, Mohammed here answered it. Maybe power coffee is there. Yeah, well, I'll ask you, what do fikas mean? First of all, as a Swedish word, but also what do they mean to you? I know you mentioned how useful they were. Yeah, to me, it's, you know, especially after this COVID culture, uh, right, of like, I will schedule time to meet with you about a specific subject. You've lost a lot of that natural water cooler kind of talk. So that's what a fika is to me, is I don't really have to explain. If I send Lamine fika, he knows that means, hey, I just want to have a chat. Maybe I want to catch up about your life. Maybe I'd like to understand what you do in your job. Um, and I would say you don't have to work for a Swedish company to fika get used to sending people coffee chat. I do it at least once a week with people, um, whether it's someone new I want to meet and just say coffee chat. And there's no expectations of the conversation. It's just about meeting new people. And that really goes back to um, that networking as well. You build your network that way and you learn. 
put yeah see chris asked is it an acronym no i don't think i think it's just a swedish word right that sort yeah. of translates to, to coffee break to or something. my swedish colleagues in for that one <laughs> right exactly so i have a closing question here before we go into sort of wrapping up the call what are you most excited for would you say it can be both in your job it can be about sort of the incoming generation of, uh, of youth you know what are you most excited for there's so much I, at ericsson i like i'm so excited we work on something different every day like I said, world's first on my team. The first year I started, my amazing team did six world's first engineering accomplishments. Like just wow. to be a part of that is like really mind blowing. And like working on technology that is connecting people. I had a friend who worked with me in uh, the ACE ERG, which is our Asian connections at Ericsson. Hopefully he's okay with me sharing this, but he told me he went back to India to visit his family for the first time in six years. And he said he was so moved because in his parents' house, he made a call. And last time he was there, there was no service. Um, he would have to go around the corner to a coffee shop just to contact anyone. And like, it might seem like, oh, we're building radios and putting up networks, but like that, that's what it's about. Like, that's just, I get goosebumps thinking about that. And so I'm just humbled and excited that I get to be a part of it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. When we say connectivity, it kind of is a broad word, but you're right. It's just people trying to connect with each other at the end of the day. It's very real, yeah. very useful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Steph, for, for joining, for chatting with us, sharing a bit about who you are and, and who we are as a company also. Um, broad sort of housekeeping notes. If you're interested on the call uh, to learn more about Ericsson or uh, look at our careers, please visit our career site at ericsson.com slash careers, which we can drop in the chat. Um, that said, yeah, thank you so much again for the team organizing this as well. Shout out to, to Dennis and Co. And if that's all, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap.